Hiya. Okay, so this is again still section two of Key Area 4, and we have looked previously at DNA and DNA going wrong and mutating. Now we're going to have a look at the effect of the DNA changing on the actual protein structure, and uh, we're also going to have a look at splice site mutations too. Okay, so um, first of all, looking at mRNA mutations. So before the primary mRNA transcript actually leaves the nucleus, splicing must occur. This is something that we have discussed about before. Um, if you've forgotten what splicing is, if you've forgotten what we mean by the primary mRNA transcript, go back and figure this out before you continue because it mm. is going to help massively. Because the idea is uh, sometimes mistakes happen here. Sometimes the right things, uh, the right things are not necessarily left in or taken out. And this can result in an effect on the nucleotide order from the mRNA code. So the example of this being, well, it's known as a splice site mutation. So you've seen this, our similar diagram before when we originally talked about splice site mutations, or sorry, when we originally talked about splicing, a splice site mutation results sometimes in introns being left in and exons being cut out. So the wrong introns being or the wrong parts of DNA that have been introns left in, so they are still in the mature mRNA transcript, and the crucial exons that should be in there being cut out, as you can see in this diagram here. And then obviously that means the wrong part of the, the mRNA code is left in the mature transcript, which means when the ribosome is going to read that, it's reading the wrong code. So it's then going to produce the wrong amino acids, which results in the wrong protein. Uh, in terms of exam questions, that sort of thing, this it tends to be multiple choice. Um, just being able to name it is enough. I don't think they'd ever actually ask you to describe it. Um, so it comes up in multiple choice questions occasionally where you just have to identify splice site mutations. Um, and I think one or two sentence answer ones, it says something like introns were left in accidentally. What's this known as? And you just mm -hmm. say splice site mutation. OK, uh, so that's literally it for splice site mutations. Um, now, the idea is. That's its own little zone, splice site mutations. Now we're going to have a look at the knock-on consequences of DNA or splice mutations that cause effects in the protein. Okay, So a mutation in DNA or during splicing can cause a protein to have the wrong order of amino acids and therefore the wrong shape. Because as we looked before, the idea when you get a peptide chain, it needs to fold correctly in order to produce a three-dimensional shape. Now that folding depends on which amino acid is where. OK, so the wrong order of amino acids causes the wrong shape. And remember this idea, proteins have to have the specific shape to do their job. If we take enzymes as an example, enzymes have to fit their substrate. They have to be complementary to their substrate. If the enzyme shape is wrong or different, it's not going to fit its substrate. It's not going to do its job. Knock on consequence for the organism. Let's take catalase as an example. If catalase is the wrong shape, if you've got the wrong gene producing the wrong catalase, you're going to have a buildup of hydrogen peroxide in your tissues. Hydrogen peroxide is one of the active ingredients in bleach. It is a poison. It is bad. So what you have is a buildup of that. OK, so what we're looking at, this idea of DNA mutations causing wrong shape of protein, causing possibly fatal, really bad consequences in organisms. So there are two types of amino acid mutations that can be caused by mutations in DNA. So all we're doing is we're saying, right, the DNA mutation is insertion, substitu substitution, deletion. We can identify that. The effect that it has on the protein will be either missense or nonsense. OK, so we can point at the protein and say, aha, instead of just that's a mutated protein that has mutated change because insertion, we call, aha, that's a missense mutation or that's a nonsense mutation by looking at the protein. So missense mutation, again, this is one of your important definitions. A missense mutation results in one amino acid in a protein being replaced with another. So it's not a whole chain of them. It is just simply one being swapped for the other. And this can have utterly no effect whatsoever, which is good. It can result in a partially working protein or it can result in a completely non-working protein. Um, this varies obviously just depending on what the mutation is. Uh, and this type of mutation is usually normally caused by a substitution mutation because it's just affecting one amino acid, not the whole frame. Hmm. I suppose it could be caused by an insertion or deletion, but you'd have to be really lucky to have an it's insertion or deletion that keeps all the amino acids the same except for one. Is That would, that would require an enormous amount of luck slash chance. 
So it's usually caused by a substitution mutation in DNA, swapping out one nucleotide for another, changing one amino acid and resulting in missense. So we can see here an example of that. So what we've got here is a substitution mutation. So we've got substitution for adenine for guanine nucleotide. So that's where the green circle is. So that's our, our changing uh, nucleotide. Causes the amino acid tyrosine, the letters tyr, T-Y-R, uh, to be swapped for the amino acid cysteine, letters C-Y-S. OK, and this results in a different shape of a protein. OK, so that diagram there shows that that is the missense mutation in the amino acid is the cysteine instead of tyrosine. The mutation in the DNA is a substitution mutation. So we're trying to get this idea that if it's a DNA mutation that the exam's asking about, you're giving the words substitution, insertion, deletion. You might say we're talking about frame shift. But if it asks you about mutations in the amino acids or the protein, it's going to be missense or nonsense. An example of a missense disease, we've covered this already in the previous video, sickle cell anemia is caused by a substitution of adenine to thymine, and the, here is our missense mutation, is the second sentence. This changes the codon for the amino acid glutamic acid to valine. So there is our missense protein, and it's a missense protein, which means we get a part working protein. So still enough to form some sort of red blood cell, but it's a weird shape and it doesn't do as good a job. Okay, so the other type of mutation we were talking about in this sense is a nonsense mutation. And again, an important def definition is the idea that a nonsense mutation results in an early stop codon in the mRNA. So rather than just affecting the amino acid and then all the ones that after it or whatever that may be, it results in an early stop codon, which means that the protein will then be non-functional because it is now much, much shorter than it should have been because the ribosome has stopped producing it much earlier than this is required. And this is something that often comes up in exams, is the idea of comparing a mutated protein. And it is always the idea that the new, the mutated protein is shorter than what the protein would be if there was no mutation. And that's that comparison. It's shorter than it would have been because early stop codon, so less of the protein has actually been transcribed, so shorter protein. Uh, again, it is... It can be caused by a, a substitution. Uh, it can be caused by a substitution mutation in DNA, but is more likely to be caused by a frame shift because that affects more amino acids as they go on, and the more of them that are affected, the higher the chance that one of them is going to be changed into a stop codon. And again, here is just an example of a nonsense mutation. So this is caused by an insertion. You can see that there is insertion of a G to what on the top strand was the amino acid for tyrosine. With that G then being added, it now becomes a stop codon, the stop codon TAG. So the once it, the ribosome gets to the point of reading this, it will then stop transcribing. It won't, take, it won't transcribe any more of that DNA. So the amino acids that would be coded for after that, so in this case CGC, it won't actually be coded for anymore. It will stop, it will cut it off before that, and the protein will end. It won't go and do the rest and just do the rest wrong. It will just simply stop as soon as it reaches that stop codon. And again, results in a shorter peptide chain, shorter protein, which then causes bad things. OK, and that's it in terms of the link between DNA mutations and amino acid mutations that's caused. In this summary, splice site mutations aren't here. Okay, So splice site mutations t do tend to be a very standalone thing. Uh, so we're just going to focus on the connection between your point mutations and amino acid mutations. So for example, uh, insertion mutation for DNA, it can cause, it causes an extra nucleotide or extra nucleotides, and it can cause frame shift changing multiple amino acids. And the amino acid mutations that it might cause are missense or nonsense. Okay, so either missense or nonsense could be caused by an insertion mutation. Similarly, deletion it results in either a nucleotide or multiple nucleotides being deleted, and again can cause frame shift. And this also can re can result in that mince and a missense or a nonsense mutation. Okay, and then substitution is one nucleotide being swapped out for another, and again that could cause missense or nonsense. It's more likely, I suppose, to cause missense because there's 20 amino acids and only one of them is going to be a stop codon. Um, so the idea is there's one in 19, no, one in 20, one in 20 chance that it's going to ha uh, 
uh, be a stop code on. So more likely that it's going to cause missense. Um, but it still could be either. And this is the idea that we need to get into your heads is this kind of it's not exclusively just substitution that causes missense. It could be either. It's a roll of a dice. It depends each time the chances are, is it going to be a stop codon or is it going to be more uh, different amino acids? OK, um, as far as I'm aware, I think this is the end. This is the last slide. Ten of ten. Yes, it is. Yes. This is the last slide for this one. So the third section of this is completely different. It's chromosome mutations. And fun fact is we've also got to deal with deletion as far as a chromosome goes, which is Just brilliant because that's you. definitely not at all confusing. So see you there.